So to combat male loneliness and to put this agonizing and crushing struggle to end once and for all, I took the necessary steps needed and got myself a male order friend slash life partner. This is Shred. With Shred by my side, I will no longer get ghosted, get stood up multiple times, be left on red, or get attempted to be roped into shameless pyramid schemes, since honestly, he's the only friend I'll ever need. Shred from here on out will be my yes man, but at the same time inform me when I'm being a stubborn bitch. And I will do the same thing for him as I give him a stable shoulder to lean on since honestly he can't exactly do that himself. He falls a little short in the stability department if you know what I mean. Is that right Shred? I think him and I are set for a fruitful future together and we have a friendship in store that nobody will ever have. I think him and I are meant for one another. To help end male loneliness once and for all and to no longer be part of the statistics, take the necessary steps required. I truly believe that I have fixed this problem for all of us dudes once and for all. Order a life-size skeleton, you won't regret it. Ever since Shred came into my life, things have been different. He's been the breath of fresh air that I've needed. He's the company that I've always wanted. And all of a sudden, I'm not lonely anymore. It finally feels like I have somebody that's there for me. And someone who's really willing to stick around for the long haul. I feel like my existence has some sort of meaning again. Like it has purpose, some meat on its bones. Isn't that right, Shred? I feel like the men of old from the 1830s, except this time with the racism. Isn't that right, Taylor Swift? Guys, chill the fuck out before you get angry. It's a joke, and honestly, I hate everybody equally. But let's not forget, I also love everybody equally as well. You gotta play both sides, am I right? Shred's honestly such a great listener, and he chooses to stick around and still be my friend after all of the bullshit he hears that comes out of my mouth on a daily basis. Because I gotta admit, I spit a lot of shit. Freddy, you are such a delusional little twat who seriously needs to touch grass. The things you speak are utter trash, and I truly believe you are beyond help. Hear this guy? He's only saying that just because he cares. You are the biggest pain in the dick I have ever had to deal with. See? Motherfucker even puts me in my place with all of his witty banter. This isn't witty banter, you dense fuck. It's hard facts, which you refuse to acknowledge. You think you're fit? Boy, you ain't shit. Skeletons, am I right? You best bugger right off with that, you hear? He puts up with all of my cringe and doesn't question it, because honestly, this fucker's pretty cringe as well. You better shut that tight little mouth of yours. He makes a really great roommate to live with and split the cost of living with because these days it's so fucking expensive to live because he doesn't care where he sleeps. I just take him apart, throw him in the closet, I'll fucking like throw him in a drawer, I'll throw him under my deck, I'll throw him under the sink and he's chillin' bro, he loves it there. I even tossed him in my cat's litter box once, he didn't mind at all, my cats liked him, they pissed on his face. Frederick, you sworn to the queen you wouldn't ever talk about that. And honestly, with the cost of living these days, thanks to Fidel Castro's degenerate bastard son, Justin, it really pays to have a roommate sleep in the drawer. Like, imagine if your roommate was just talking shit one day and you just, like, threw him in the drawer or threw him under the sink and just fucking left him there. <laughs> Bro, I'm not a psychopath, I swear. Frederick von Savage III, you are borderline psychopathic if not full-blown psychopathic. You need to seek help. Let's not forget how cheap the grocery bill is. He told me all he does is fast for 24 hours a day, so theoretically, he doesn't eat. So fuck yeah for me, right? Freddy, you are well acquainted to the fact that I have a strict diet of the driest roast known to man. Three cups of moldy, mushy peas and six liters of cold English tea. You haven't fed me in weeks, and this is why I look like this. 
skeletons, bro. They just keep talking shit. I'm so fucking done with you. This guy has such a sense of humor, I swear, man. He just knows how to crack jokes. The only thing that's getting cracked are these bony knuckles before I throw these brittle hands at you. I'm not sure if he'll make the best wingman or not, since I gotta admit, he's a little standoffish and stiff in his delivery, since his words can come across a little hollow sometimes, as he's kind of hard to understand, because I gotta admit, Shred's kinda dumb. But I'm sure I'll score myself a spooky little grunge bitch who'll wanna run away to the forest with me when the time is right. I was pretty hesitant about getting myself a mail order friend because it seems a little incelish, sub five, black pillish kind of thing for me to do. But now that I have taken the leap and experienced what it's like to have this companion in my life, I really wish I did this sooner. I really wish I could say the same, but I don't. The incels really may be onto something here with ordering lifeless, inanimate objects from the internet to fill the void in their lives without actually addressing the root of their problems, but I mean, we, we really should have been listening to them all along. Good job, incels. <laughs> Freddy is right here. The neckbeard reddit bronies have been right all along. The statistics for male loneliness don't hit as close to home as they did before because honestly, I couldn't give less of a shit about that anymore because I have learned to go outside and touch grass. I can confidently assure you that he hasn't touched any sort of grass since I arrived. Shred has made me so carefree and Shred has made my life feel so simple. I now feel young again as I can effectively mog correctly. Fuck yeah for mogging, am I right? All my looks maxing champions out there. You know I mug you any day of the week. My looks age like that of Prince William. Oh wait, that's pretty bad. As of recently, I've puked up the red pill, the blue pill, the black pill, and the doom pill, as I have made way for ingesting a whole new pill. I have now took the shred pill. Freddy, that honestly sounded pretty gay. Get yours today and make male loneliness go away. You aren't a statistic until you make yourself one. Am I right, Shred? <laughs> Excuse me, kind sirs and sirettes. Do you have a second to talk about male loneliness? All right, so shits aside, male loneliness is something I've wanted to talk about for a while, but have never really known exactly how to address it. It has honestly been a topic that has been discussed at length by now to the point I'm sure most people know about it, but I know a vast amount of people have absolutely no idea what I mean when I bring this term up and just think I'm talking out my ass because they think men face absolutely no problems at all. Patriarchy, am I right? <laughs> Patriarchy, am I right? <laughs> I remember bringing this topic up to someone once and I mentioned men's rights along the way and they immediately questioned what the fuck I just said and actually laughed at me like nothing I said held any sort of weight or substance whatsoever. Fuck! This is why male loneliness is a thing. And this is why it's rising at such a substantial rate. Nobody thinks that dudes actually go through anything, and if they do, it must be some kind of joke and they aren't taken seriously. Cause suck it up, you little soy bitch. Stop being gay. What the fuck, you got feelings? A valid existence? Sit the fuck down, you little So recent articles have stated that loneliness is more harmful than smoking 15 cigarettes per day. That alone makes my lungs hurt. Other research has shown that being alone and social isolation puts you at a 29% increased risk of heart attack and a 32% greater risk of having a stroke. Loneliness has been linked to a weaker immune system and higher blood pressure. It also gives you a higher chance to develop Alzheimer's earlier in life due to the lack of stimulation and overall excitement your brain gets while with and around people. 
And honestly, anyone who has had any experience with Alzheimer's and dementia, I wouldn't even wish that upon my worst enemy. Loneliness is a very detrimental thing to ourselves and is something a lot of people overlook when it comes to others in our daily lives and how it affects our health in the long term. Men really seem to struggle with this the most these days. Studies have shown that over 40% of men experience feeling lonely every day and 40% of men do not seek help help until they've reached crisis point. The numbers could honestly be higher, and I truly believe that they are, since only 48% of men feel comfortable discussing loneliness or feelings of isolation, or even emotions themselves. So the rise of male virginity is and has been at an all-time high. In 2018, 28% of men between ages 18 and 30 reported no sex in the past year, with women at being 18%. It's to note that these stats were taken pre-pandemic and pre-shit getting absolutely fucked, unlike these dudes, so I assume by now in 2024, numbers would be in the mid to high 30s by now. You also have to realize that these numbers started to increase back in 2008 when Death Consciousness by Have a Good Life was released, so <laughs> I think that's the answer to all our problems here, despite that album being an absolute sad banger. So honestly, to sum it up, for a lot of guys, the bitches just isn't. <laughs> Male loneliness is so bad that it has dudes out on hinge paying real money to send virtual roses to women hoping to get their attention, but after spending $15 on three of those fake fucks, they get ignored, making you feel absolutely more pathetic than you were before. <laughs> Couldn't be me, right? <laughs> Couldn't be me, right? <laughs> Fuck me. It might have been me. I hate my life. Y'all ever heard of the Younger Dryas? A great flood which wiped out and changed our entire planet, what, like a millennia ago? Dudes literally be going through the complete polar opposite of them. For them, it's dry, bro. It's so dry. It's like a hoe drought, a pussy famine, if you will. <laughs> Not even a drop of the coon has been in reach for some of these dudes for probably the same amount of time. They couldn't even fathom what they would do if such a resource was provided to them. It'd be like Squidward eating a Krabby Patty for the first time and then going absolutely fucking nuts afterwards. Hello, son. Only 27% of men say that they have six close friends. It's not a lot of friends. This number is half what it was 30 years ago, that being 12, if you can do math. Further, 15% of men say that they have no close friends at all, and this is up an astounding 500% since 1990. I, myself, am a lonely fuck. I have a small handful of close friends and they all live like 10 hours away from me, as well as one all the way across the world. I have honestly chilled with one person in the time of me being back within this area, and the last time that we chilled, or were supposed to chill, I got fucking stood up. <laughs> Fuck. Peoples be fucked. In all of my years of not having many friends, <laughs> I have learned to love the comforts of my own company, but I know not everyone has such a mind like this one. It's fucking iron, so you better become a blacksmith to forge your mind into something strong and durable. If not, you just can be a little lonely bitch. It has proven how loneliness leads to depression, and there is the biggest mental health crisis in history going on right now, where we're all just fucking sad. We all long and yearn for a human connection. We are social creatures by default, and it's strange that in the age of social media, where these apps are supposed to make us feel so much more connected to one another, everyone has become so distant, closed off, and unable to engage in social interaction within the real world. It honestly feels like it's had quite the opposite effect of what you would think it would do to us. I saw this graph showing that since the iPhone came out, or smartphone I guess, the loneliness has ramped up. Or, as what I was saying earlier, when death consciousness was released. 
And that really goes to show that these devices that are supposed to help us connect is causing us to disconnect. I've talked about this a couple times on the channel now about how social media is causing people to go outside less and less because, well, it's true. Trust me, bro, university has all the credible stats. And it really just goes to show that we're all as anti-social as we've ever been due to us all socializing online as opposed to the real world. Or we're just not socializing at all since we're all so hyper stimulated due to all the instant gratification at our fingertips. There's also this graph that I saw saying how people in high school just aren't really dating anymore. I don't know if I can find it. This was honestly a while ago, but it was showing how from the 1960s to today, the 1960s were up here. It just over time gradually went down and down and down, meaning that more and more people in high school just aren't dating anymore and have never been in a relationship. And I honestly think that not dating in high school makes it a lot harder to date later on in life due to the lack of experience which also plays into the whole thing of how 60% of men under the age of 30 are single fucks these days. On the contrary, only 30% of women in the same age range are single. That's a 50% difference. And I honestly think that this does not get any better when you go through college either. My buddy going through college right now used to tell me all of the time about how hard it is to make friends and how hard it is to meet decent people there. Everyone is just so closed off and too focused on school and themselves. Him and I actually went to college together before I dropped out in the first month due to me being an illiterate dumb fuck, but that's besides the point. <laughs> Once college is done, and if you haven't made any friends of any sort, you're essentially fucked, because how do you do it after that? Honestly, the way you're supposed to make friends is through work, your social circle, and community. Which I mean, if you have no social circle, a lack of community, because let's be real, what even is community these days if it isn't bar culture? That leaves you work. And a lot of people really don't have the luxury to work with people in your same age range who share the same interests and vibes as you. If you do, fuck yeah for you. Working long hours to survive in this economy doesn't make that any easier since these days to live comfortably, you either have to work two jobs, long hours, or luck the fuck out on a good job, which is rare. Not to mention, when we get home, most of us don't even have the energy to engage in a social life. So we have to drown ourselves within quick entertainment and instant gratification instead of trying to go out and do something with ourselves it turns into such a hard cycle to break out of. Some say it's a societal thing, causing men to be like this, lonely and isolated, like how we shouldn't be opening up since it's almost like a feminine thing to do, blaming it on masculine norms and toxic masculinity, stating how we shouldn't do that, but I disagree. Men have literally been encouraged for years now to express themselves and open up about their feelings, something that we have been doing. More and more men these days are opening up than ever before as opposed to 50 years ago, when dudes just didn't have the capacity to talk about feelings, so they just beat their wife and kids instead. So I think this whole thing on like blaming it on fucking like toxic masculinity and just like all this shit these days is not true and it's a load of hot dog shit and there's more to be said about this there's a lot more to be said about this i think it has a lot more to do with how people react to men opening up about their feelings and not us in general and fucking toxic masculine norms being the actual problem part of masculinity is honesty and if you disagree well no People seem to hate when men talk about feelings. The men who don't open up don't do it because they think it's emasculating and weak. They don't open up because the people they open up to view it as emasculating and weak. Everybody's just blaming men yet again for something that they didn't do. You ever been into a girl before? She's into you, things are looking great, and you open up, get a little emotional and vulnerable one day, and she just immediately fucks off and loses interest? Yeah, <laughs> masculine norms, am I right? Yeah, what's good? I'm back. There's such a damaging narrative going around within the red pill space that therapy is gay, but dude, no. 
Instead of opening up to someone who's gonna ghost you and talk shit behind your back, you're opening up to somebody who's being paid to professionally listen to your problems via a therapist, and they're there to help you understand why you are the way you are and unravel the mess that you have tangled up inside. Honestly, bro, anybody who thinks therapy is gay clearly has never tried it. I've done it a handful of times, and each time I left, I felt like a massive weight has been lifted off of my shoulders. This push to not be vulnerable is kind of brain dead. Like, bro, talk to someone. You truly don't understand the catharsis until the catharsis catharsizes you. Say that three times fast, you won't be able to do it. We have all had those long, in-depth conversations with friends or family where when we finish the conversation, our hearts are buzzing, making us feel warm, heard, and understood. You know what that is? That's therapy. Fucking try it, pussy. What, you scared of feelings? Those feelings are what shape us into better humans. Those feelings are what truly make the human experience when you let them outside of the bottle, instead of bottling them up all the time. Fucking pussy. There's honestly so much damage which comes by keeping these emotions bottled up and suppressed. If you never let those motherfuckers out in some way or another, you will never live something substantial and meaningful and you will never evolve as a person. So stop being a pussy and stop fucking suppressing yourself. You ever play a musical instrument and while you dwell on the things burdening you and as you play the music, it is being influenced and inspired by your thoughts as they're being released and transmuted into new and moving material? That's therapy. Then after that, you feel a cathartic feeling like a weight has been lifted off your shoulders. Boom, that's therapy. You ever go and make any sort of art, whatever your medium may be, with the same process in which I just explained? Boom, therapy. Stop being a bottled up bitch and become therapized today. Uh, uh, uh. This whole topic, dude, I can go on for hours. I don't care if it's something that we've all heard time and time again. It is something that needs to be said again and again until these stats start to go down. Nobody deserves to be lonely. We're all incredibly unique individuals with so much beauty to offer this world. And honestly, that's why I believe that we're here. It's to love, create, provide value, but we're all being suppressed by this whole fucking loneliness thing. Like honestly, a lot of us are truly robbed of the human experience. People need to start practicing being compassionate a lot more to our brothers in need. Same with our sisters too, because honestly, I know the lovely ladies be hurting too. So let's just go link up with one another and let's be lonely together. Two lonely souls sharing one life is better than a bunch of individual lonely souls living their own lives of isolation. So why don't we drop all of this technology, go outside, touch some grass, and before we know it, our world will collide with someone else's since they are also touching grass. Touching grass is severely underrated. Let's not be a statistic any longer.